Breaking news into Sports Center. OJ Simpson died yesterday of cancer at the age of 76. Michael Wilbon is joining us now on the phone. And Michael, can you give us your reaction when you learned of this news just this morning? Shay, there's so many reactions because OJ Simpson had become um, over the course of his life, from the time we first saw him at about 19 years old until his death now, one of the most complex figures in American public life. Uh, from the time, of course, he was a, a star, and not just a star. We're, we're at a point now where we're enough years out where there's a whole generation of people who don't understand and don't really have an idea of, of why O.J. Simpson, why the public, American public, was so consumed. I won't use the word obsessed, but consumed with O.J. and O.J. news and where he was and what he did. And there's a whole generation of people now who, who don't get that. But for those of us of a certain age, I mean, there was nobody really like O.J. Simpson, who, had, who, who was the first really sort of celebrity, the consumed celebrity athlete public figure by mainstream America. And by mainstream, I mean white America, a black man in the 19, late 1960s and early 70s who was on national television commercials with Hertz and all kinds of other commercials. But we came into our living rooms through the NFL became a star who was the lar one of the larger stars. He wasn't Ali-sized, but on the next rung of stars, bigger than anybody, say, in the NBA at that time or anybody else in pro football. And O.J. Simpson carried that to television. He carried that throughout a public life until he reached a place um, where he wasn't um, that sort of cuddly, loved figure anymore. And so you have to sort of wrap your arms around all of that, and it's, it's, it's complex, it's difficult. Look, you mentioned the different generations. I am of the generation that remembers the chase and the trial at the very forefront of my mind. And I know you were at the Washington Post during that time. What were your memories of that entire situation and what you remember from that chase and the trial? Well, Shane, and that's a great place to sort of join the conversation about OJ. For me, I started covering the NFL in 1986 for the Washington Post, and that's when OJ was at NBC. And so I was around him all the time. I mean, you know, when I say all the time, I mean several times a year, if not many times a year or per season. And so I knew OJ Simpson reasonably well to be invited to dinner with him, by him, uh, to be in stadium press boxes, to be on the road in airports. And so when this happened, and we're all at the NBA Finals because people didn't cover just one thing. And I'm at the NBA Finals. And when this happens and you're, you're consumed, the Knicks and Rockets were playing, and the chase was inadvertently put up on the big tell screen in Madison Square Garden. So you're at the NBA Finals, but you're consumed with, the, with this chase that at the time you think is going to wind up with O.J. Simpson taking his own life. That's what we thought in live time. And so this was not a, a distant person who was just the subject of news. Everybody knew him. And he was the person who walked into a room and held court for hours, for years, for, for a couple of decades. So by the time we get to the 1990s, early to mid-90s, it's unthinkable that O.J. would be involved in this. And everybody in America spent time lining up on one side or, or not. Did he do it? Did he not? Do you think he did? What do you think? If he didn't do it, who? This, this consumed... America conversation when people did things like, oh, wait, go to the office every day. Um, and there was no streaming and people got their news and their conversation from a tiny number of channels, even cable. Um, and so OJ was the talk of the time. And so that, that chase uh, redirected his life, of course. And what happened before that redirected a lot of lives. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's, it, you know, when you think back on it, the, the trial and the, um, the verdict took a lot of time. Uh, the acquittal took a lot of time. It, it, it you know, it, it caused a lot of hurt feelings in America for people who didn't understand and didn't want to hear that a lot of folks were like, good, he, he's, he's, he's innocent. Well, we don't know about innocent, but he's, he's acquitted. And people took that and, 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 didn't understand, and you had another divide, largely based along racial lines, about O.J. Simpson, whether or not he should be acquitted, whether or not he could truly be innocent, how to consume that, how to digest it. And it really 
it, it goes on to now, again, if you're a certain, of a certain age, if you're above, if you're older than, if you're 50 or above in this country, you had feelings about that, and you may still have feelings about it, and you debated it. Um, and so for me, it was not some cartoonish figure. It was somebody that I knew who actually said to me, hey, come over here. Let me introduce Do you know this owner? Do you know this assistant commissioner? Come here. Let me introduce you to this person. And it was somebody that, that I knew. Now, I'm not going to say I was friends with him. We weren't that. I didn't know him that well. But the people who were around pro football in the 1970s, 80s, everybody knew to some degree O.J. Simpson. You know, speaking to Michael Wilbon right now, as we talk about O.J. Simpson, who has died at the age of 76 after a battle with cancer. Um, look, today, there's a lot of questions that have been asked to a lot of people. How do you remember O.J. Simpson or his legacy or whatever? That's hard for different reasons for different people to answer. But I think the bigger thing here is now, how did he impact American culture with the events mm. in his life? What would you say, Wilbon? He changed, he changed it several times. And by the way, people don't say it's a great question and conversation to have and a very necessary one because everybody wants to distill things down to a stupid headline or storyline. I hate the phrase storyline. I hate, it. I hate the word. Um, as somebody who realizes and covers sports long enough to know that storylines change, mm -hmm. you know, they, they go over the river and through the woods. And OJ's did, uh, unlike anybody's. And so handling that legacy, I mean, you, you better have different feelings about different points of his life and career, careers, plural. He changed it. In, in, he, again, he made, I'm trying to think of somebody who could literally, in, in, in black world, as I call it, be called a digestible celebrity in mainstream America in 1972, just to pick a year when OJ would have been, you know, still a young man, but viable and a big star. And I don't, I don't know. Remember, the, the famous black athletes of our time came, many of them came before they could be digested on television. So the, Jackie Robinson didn't have that, not even Bill Russell. Muhammad Ali had it and was uh, in a place that nobody else was. But O.J. Simpson, O.J. Simpson helped define that. He helped create it. And then he lives his life one way, and you get to this place where there's the sharpest turn you could ever take, that all of a sudden – he became a person, and you're going, wait a minute. This guy has been coming into my living room every year since he was 20 years old is now involved in this. And so you know, people didn't know what to think of it, and they had, they had various things. The point is there are various ways to consume O.J. Simpson's life, his legacy, and everything he was about. He's a great, 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 great football player, the first one to get 2,000 yards, and he did it in 14 games, not 16 or 17. Great, great, great Hall of Fame player who helped define that position when it was the most important position, just as important as quarterback in football. And then you have this other stuff, the pop culture icon. And I do mean icon. And then you have somebody involved in the most notorious murder trial, I think, um, in the history of modern American culture. And all that has to be digested. Yeah. And all of it has to be processed today as well as we talk about the death of O.J. Simpson. He died at the age of 76 after a battle with cancer. Michael Wilbon joining us on the phone to give some perspective. Thank you, Michael. We appreciate it.